Hey guys, Brandon over at LS4 King. Today we're doing our first segment on our tubular subframe. This is going to be kind of a series to cover everything because there's so much information that goes into this. But I kind of wanted to explain my thought process for why we're pursuing this as a solution for the platform. And specifically, we're going to start off by talking about the engine and transmission mounting portion. So first question I want to ask everyone. Would you build your house on a seesaw for a foundation? Pretty ridiculous question, right? I think most of you would say absolutely not. So I raised the question, why did GM think it was a good idea to put their motors on a seesaw? V6 applications, 60 degree V6 applications, such as the 3.1, 3.4s, 3.5s, all came on a subframe with two mounts, right? transmission side and one right underneath the harmonic balancer on the engine. The two additional mounts, if you want to call them that, are dog bones, right? You're all too familiar with those. If you've owned a W body for any length of time, you have a bracket on the radiator support and you've got this dog bone that attaches to two brackets on V6 applications, one bracket on the LS4. Why is that important? Well, guys love referring to these as motor mounts. They're not really motor mounts. These are just lateral limiters. That's all it really is. They are not weight bearing and they just try to control some of that forward and aft movement of your drivetrain on the factory rickety subframe. So why does that matter? Plenty of guys have gone fast like that, right? A handful. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the problem is it is the worst possible approach to producing power and getting it to the pavement that you could possibly think of. Uh, guys have tried all sorts of things over the years, such as poly mounts to correct that issue. Um, it helps, you know, but at the end of the day, you still do not have a triangulated mounting system. Uh, if we take a look at this V6 subframe right here on the ground, it kind of illustrates it a little bit better since we don't have the whole drivetrain there. You have your transmission mount over on the driver's side, side of the transmission case, and then you have the clevis that accepts the mount underneath the harmonic balancer. That's it. Well, one thing that GM did get right with the LS4 is that they finally moved to a triangulated system. And what I thought was funny is once they abandoned the LS4 and went to the high feature V6, the 3.6 applications, they also triangulated the mounts because it is much more conducive to performance, much more. So here you can see we have a forward engine mount. We have a rearward transmission mount that comes off the diff cover as well as the driver's side transmission mount that you guys have all come to know. Now, another area where we run into issues is all the variances, minute variances between the subframes. So we only have two examples here for you. We've got the 3860 degree V6 subframe. We've got the LS4 subframe. What you do not see here is all the steel subframes that they offered for various engine combinations as well as the high feature V6 subframe. Ooh, excuse me, <laughs> that I mentioned before. Um, bear with me guys, sorry about my voice and I'm a little bit under the weather today. So, you know, the moral of the story here is that it makes interchange from model to model and drivetrain to drivetrain very, very, very difficult because while they physically bolt up into the vehicle the same, mounting locations for engine and transmission are different on every single one of these. For instance, the V6 driver side transmission mount pad, while it's roughly the same size overall shape as the extrusion on the LS4 subframe, it's actually in a different location. In the LS4, they moved the 4T65 closer to the steering rack. On the V6 applications, they moved the whole drivetrain further forward. And the bolt spacing's different on the mounting pads as well. So, you know, why is that problematic? Okay, you have a V6 and you finally want to go to a V8. Well, now you got to go find another stock V8 subframe, clean all that up. At least you're taking advantage of the triangulated mounts. But now what? You go out buy a set of subframe bushings, you buy solid mounts, all to make this design work, right? And that can be super frustrating as a tuner um, or a car enthusiast in general, right? Like, you want to have a path of progression for your build, especially if you want to um, have future plans to upgrade your drivetrain down the road. You don't want to be locked in or pigeonholed into spending money over and over and over again to achieve 
similar performance, right? So we took that into consideration and we said, well, steering rack location is the same on every subframe, right? Control arm pickup points are the same regardless of your drivetrain combination. Really the only thing that varies is the mounts. And why would you want to work with a seesaw anyways, you know? So that's when we started kicking the idea around of a one size fits all subframe that can accommodate all the different engine and transmission combinations. <clears throat> Everything you could possibly think of, which is really cool, right? So that's why I wanted to dive into the mount aspect of this today. So if you take a look at this one that we still have sitting on the fixture plate, you will notice some minor revisions to the tubes in relation to the prototype unit. But this is essentially the final design and this is the final layout of all the primary tubes. So you see we have a 4T80 case sitting on here and we've got the LS4 King mounts on either corner because one thing that we took from the LS4 subframe is it's triangulated mounts that I keep preaching about, right? Stock LS4 subframe. LS4 King solid mounts. This drivetrain does not go anywhere, right? Doesn't go anywhere. No dog bone. Clear up the top half of the engine. This is how you put power down. You do not put power down with this. When your transmission is moving independently of the subframe, which is moving independently of the CVs in relation to the center line of the spindle, there's so much lost energy in this combination. Hence why when I help guys with 3.8s do the 4T80 swap, we start with the LS4 subframe. Well, now what we can offer is a tubular solution, triangulated mounts, path of progression for upgrades. You got a V6 right now, you wanna go to a 30, uh, 4T80, great, we can accommodate that, set you up with our traditional 4T80 swap mounts, drop right under our tubular subframe like stock, and then you have your choice of front mount. You wanna do LS4, 3800, high value V6. Let's do it. You wanna do a K-series swap, buy a bell housing adapter. You wanna do a TDI swap. Great, let's explore those. I've got so many ideas of different combinations we can run in these chassis using this solution. So I'm really excited about this and I think it's gonna open up a ton of doors. Now, you know, what are some of the other highlights and benefits to this working with my overall concept? Well, take a look at them on the ground. I mean, you can see on the final design, our gussets and that crossbar are kind of gone. We support it a little differently, but it opens up the footprint for serviceability of your drivetrain significantly. Um, 3800 V6 subframe with no mounts on it, that tips the scales at 46 pounds. Modeling shows this unit with all the bracketry on it coming in at 35. Right off the rip, you're saving 10 pounds right off the rip just from structure to structure. And guess what? When you get this, it already has solid cups. You don't need to buy subframe bushings. You save money right there, money that you would otherwise be investing into what is now approaching in excess of 20 years old. Um, so we're trying to solve a lot of problems at the same time. Reduce unsprung weight, make it easier to service your vehicle, have a modular mounting system that allows you to have various drivetrain combinations, and my favorite part of the debate, solid mounts. Now, I'm not really sure why there's so much misinformation on the internet. I've had people tell me, Oh, if you put solid mounts on your car, you're going to break that aluminum transmission case. You're going to break that aluminum engine block. That is asinine. The only way any solid mount would have any effect on transmission case, engine block, anything of that nature, poor construction that isn't lined up and is inducing some type of twisting or pulling motion, or somebody using the wrong hardware and bottoming it out inside of the aluminum case and cracking it, which I have seen people do with stock brackets. So, will solid mounts blow your transmission apart and break your engine? Absolutely not. We've sold hundreds, literally hundreds of 4T80 and 4T65 mounts. All solid. I have never offered a poly piece for these cars. Reason being, I think it's childish. Um, <laughs> You know, anybody who's seriously pursuing horsepower, you do not need poly mounts. First of all, 
We're talking about a W body, not a Maserati. These things don't ride great to begin with. And I promise you, the small bump in NVH going to the solid mounts is so minute, it's very barely noticeable. And, uh, you know, uh, you can see my customers talking about it all the time in uh, W Body Kingdom. Um, you know, a lot of guys have even done some, like, in-car videos uh, showing before and after. I think we've got a video up on our channel right now of a comparison with the solid subframe bushings. So maybe... Um, implementing a solid mount video on the website as well would be good for you guys to reference and, you know, show you. Also, if you're in the area, come by the shop, jump in the super, go for a ride. It's a daily driver with solid mount, solid subframe bushings, and I love it. I mean, the feedback you get from the road, just knowing that my drivetrain's not flopping all over the place and that it's secured in one location, I mean, it's just reassurance that I know when I step on the loud pedal, my drivetrain staying exactly where it's supposed to be and letting the axles do their job. So, you know, solid mounts are the only thing you're ever gonna see from me. I'm never gonna offer poly mounts. I just don't think it's conducive to this particular platform. Um, I'm not discouraging you from using them. I just keep getting guys asking me to develop poly mounts that replicate this just because they read online that the solid mounts are just too rough for the street. I don't do it. That's not what I do. We're trying to go fast here. Um, you want, you know, if you want to go get groceries and go to church and stuff, that's cool. Um, that's not what I'm building stuff like this for. And honestly, like, you know, if your goal is to make 200 wheel horse and have a Mercedes ride in your W body, then this doesn't concern you and you're already too far into the video anyways. But for the rest of you that are trying to go fast, you know, I, I think I've made it abundantly clear over and over. This bad this good <laughs> that's what we want that's why we took inspiration from that and included it here so you know again this is going to be part of a bigger segment as we move through this we're going to explore different drivetrain combinations we're going to talk about how we're improving the geometry for the suspension pickup points uh, we're just going to move right down the line as this progresses and keep you guys up to date with all the different parts that we are going to offer. Um, 3,800 guys. If you have this combination and you want to maintain it, you might be thinking, well, how am I going to put my 4T65 and my 3.8 on here with the triangulated mounts? Because my 4T65 doesn't have a mount up front on the diff cover. We're going to solve that problem as well. So 4T65 from an LS4 had... You know, again, part of the triangulated mounting systems, aluminum bracket that mounts on the side cover of the transmission, identical to the side cover on the V6. So same thing with the diff extension housing. Bracket for that motor mount to triangulate the system, diff cover is the same bolt pattern, whether it's V6 or V8. You know, now I understand these parts are getting harder to come by, especially the LS4 stuff. They haven't made it in years, right? We're gonna start reproducing these. So even if you're a 3,800 guy and you're on a budget and you want to use a stock LS4 subframe, I'll have used brackets up on the website. You could at a minimum triangulate your mounting system and make everything a lot more enjoyable on your car. You know, it, it, it's almost like, don't get me wrong, 4T65s, I'm not a fan of. I don't really care for that transmission, which is why I spent so much time paving the way for the 4T80, right? But I will concede that a 4T65 can live. Um, they can live in lighter applications. Hence why we see the Fiero guys have such good luck with them. They're such light cars, they don't need something like a 300 pound 4T80. They can get away with a little 4T65. Um, with that being said, I get it. If you're a V6 guy and you wanna keep running with this transmission, there's a lot of really good tuners out there. There's a lot of good companies that offer phenomenal support for them. Um, so I, I get it. My only recommendation to you is keep your car light. Well, how do you do that? Get rid of unsprung weight. Products like this, you know, that's what we're here pursuing. If, let's just say, exact side by side, let's say we only save 10 pounds on the subframe. You're just starting there. Then as you progress, well, you got the solid mounts and you eliminated all that OEM bracketry, you saved weight there. 
You went from a stock control arm to a tubular construction. You saved weight there. It all adds up by the time you get to the end of the combination, frees up real estate in the engine bay, gets rid of that unsprung weight. That's what we want to accomplish. So again, this is gonna be a very fluid project that's moving forward faster than I anticipated, which is really cool. It's really exciting for all of us. Um, so I wanted to get this video out, get the first installment, let you know what we're working on. Again, seesaws are bad, three points are great. Talk to you soon.